going on everyone got a brand new movie review for you guys today and today i'm discussing green book very excited going into green book a lot of the reasons being you got vigo mortensen you got marsha ali you got peter farley directed yes the guy who made dumb and dumber and it's been getting a lot of award buzz through all the festivals it's been winning best picture at a lot of them as well so i had my hype ex set really high up for this film i went in to green book and man it exceeded my expectations this is one of the best films of this year and definitely one of my favorites of the year as well. Sometimes when you watch a film, especially for me, where I'll be like, okay, I just saw the best actor performance this year. One, that's Remy Malek with Bohemian Rhapsody. Or I'll say, oh my God, I just saw the best actress performance of this year within Glenn Close and The Wife or Lady Gaga within A Star is Born. Last year, when I saw Shape of Water, I said, that's going to be our best picture winner this year. Hands down, and it was. Green Book not only gets the award for the most heartwarming movie of 2018, taking it away from Paddington 2, but it also gets the award, and I really do think it will, win Best Picture at 2019's Oscar. It, it still will have you laughing, it'll have you crying, it'll have you smiling from ear to ear, it'll have you cringing and being scared for our characters, but in a sense, it'll leave a very heartwarming and heart fuzzy feeling inside your tummy after the end of the films. What is Green Book about? Green Book is about a working class Italian American played by Vigo Mortensen who becomes a driver of an African American classical pianist who is going on a tour of venues throughout the 1960s American South. And of course that pianist is played by Marshall Ali. Marshall Ali is one of the best actors working today. Same with Vigo Mortensen. And you also got Linda Carlini playing Vigo Mortensen's wife within this movie who they have a, di a great dynamic with one another. This film takes place in the 1960s when racism is a running above us, and when the South was not one of the best places, and that's why Vigo Mortensen is picked as one of the drivers to take Marshall Lee down and keep him safe, because it is through the South. That's not one of the best places to go, but he wants to make a statement, and I think Green Book not only tackles that racist element so well that was shown in the 60s, but it tackles it on such a limelight, and something that feels realistic, something that's still an issue of today, and I love the way that Peter Farley directed this film, and the way that he told the story, because again, the guy is known for Dumb and Dumber movies. He's known for those time of movies, which are never getting Oscar buzz, but it's the way that this film was written and directed. Because a lot of the jokes in here could have came off insanely racist, or they could have came off insanely harassing and just not coming off right. But the way that the film was directed, acted, and wrote, and that's why it worked so well. Our two main actors in here, Viggo Mortensen and Marshall Lee, are the big stars of the whole entire film, and they absolutely give some of the best performances of the year. I don't say I don't think they're winning anything. I do think they could get nominated because Viggo Mortensen really transforms in this character. I didn't see Viggo Mortensen. I saw the man he was playing, Tony Lip, this Italian working class Americano. You know, I, I, that's a bad accent, but I love what Viggo Mortensen did with this character and you just believe every single thing that this working class guy is doing and the way that him and Marshall Lee are really much the same people and the character arcs and the character dynamics that they do go through throughout this movie it's a very wide range of emotions that they go through and there's some moments in here where I was just laughing my ass off with them but also in tears with them because you're understanding what they're both going through they really are alike in a lot of different ways that they don't even know until later on in the film even though we're saying that this film could come off in a very cliche way but it doesn't and Marshall Lee is one of the big reasons that it doesn't. He plays this upper class African American in the 1960s, which again is not one of the best things in the 1960s. African Americans, there's still a lot of racism going on, like I was saying, but it's how he plays it off with Vigo Mortensen and the charismatic values that they hold within one another are just outstanding. A moment in here in the rain where they're just both arguing with each other and screaming at each other and you just after that moment you can tell that there was a difference between them where they're totally understanding each other and I, I just love what they did that that and there's just one other funny moment there's so many moments in here where I was just laughing and having such a blast with this film but also crying and trying not to cry and be in tears and one of the best moments in here that really is on a happier note is when Viggo Mortensen and them drive through Kentucky I'm not gonna say what but Viggo Mortensen is really obsessed with food and there's a certain brand of food that everyone really likes that's from Kentucky, and it's a fast food restaurant. You can kind of go from there, but that scene was great. Him and Marshall Lee and everything they go through. I, I love this film. Uh, I, I don't want to go into more details. I want you to go into the film not knowing any of the big moments, not knowing any of the little details. For, for cons, I do have one small nitpick, and it is the fact that there is a subplot that they introduced earlier in the film with kind of these mobsters, I guess, and they're, it never really goes anywhere. They introduced it a couple more times, and it just felt like a really big afterthought, and there are a couple scenes where it goes, 
and you think it's going to go somewhere and then it like cuts to the next thing and it, it doesn't feel abrupt at all it feels very seamless but i don't know if it was how it was written or if there really were moments missing from theirs because it is a two hour and ten minute movie so it is a little bit long but it does it doesn't even feel like that it just flows by but I did have those small little things with it where I was kind of wondering, okay, why was that even introduced? Could another rewrite just gotten out of it? And some of those do add up to some of the best moments in the film. But I feel like there could have been easily another 20, 30 minutes in this film. And I would have had no problem with it. I wanted more with these characters. I wanted another road trip with these characters. It's easily one of the best road trip movies of all time. I loved Green Book. It's a film that I definitely recommend to you. If you Get your family, get your friends, go see this film. Just sit in the theater, laugh, cry, and get, leave the theater with a very heartwarming sense to you. So with all that said, I'm going to give Green Book an A. This was easily one of my favorite films of this year so far. Tell me guys what are your guys' thoughts on Green Book. Are you guys going to be seeing it this month? Are you not? Let's talk about it down below in the comments. I'm so curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. What are your guys' thoughts on Viggo Mortensen and Marsha Ali? Let's talk about it. Have a lively discussion down below. If you guys are new here, hit that like and subscribe button. Then go hit up Sandwich on Films also down below. Because right down there, you guys can get into advanced movie screens. Even check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. But guys, of course, until next time, stay classy.